be honest with you, it took me quite some time to figure out what I'm gonna show you in today's video, but when I did, it elevated my photography to a whole new level. I'm hoping that by sharing this with you today, you can instantly improve your photography overnight. I'm Austin James Jackson, professional landscape photographer. I'm really excited for you guys to be here today. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a contrast trick that many of the best photographers, especially landscape photographers, are actively using to create photos that are both more realistic looking and photos that have more depth. The best thing about this trick is that it's not a specialized piece of software or a tool that lies within some software you need to purchase. This trick can be applied in just about any photo editing software that you already own and already use. To first illustrate this contrast trick, I'll show you guys these photos. Well, it's one photo edited two different ways. You can guys spot the difference. Obviously, one version has a lot more contrast than the other. The version that I think is better is this one. The key place where you guys should look at the differences in the images is in the foreground rocks and in the background ridges. Notice how this image has a baseline contrast where the contrast appears consistent throughout the scene. This is what most photographers do and it's a huge mistake. We love that contrast slider because it gives our images some punch and it's usually one of the first adjustments that we use, but you might be severely hurting your edit before you even get your feet off the ground. On the other hand, notice how this image has more contrast in the foreground and less in the background. This creates a little bit of depth, making my photo look far more realistic and more compelling, in my opinion. Now, you might be asking, why would we want the background of our images to have less contrast than the foreground? The answer is simple. Next time you're outside, look in the distance. Any object that's far away, like a mountain or a hill, is going to be far less contrasting than an object right in front of you. This is due to distance and the amount of haze and atmosphere you have to look through. Even on the clearest of days, there's still atmosphere clouding up those objects in the background. As a photographer, we can really lean into this, making the objects in the background appear even further away by reducing the contrast even further. Now that I've explained myself, let's jump right into the Lightroom. I'll show you guys how you can easily do this to any of your images, even if they're already edited, even if they're already done, you can just simply throw this right on top and see how it looks. Let's go ahead and jump right in there to Lightroom. So this image is going to be a little bit more challenging than maybe some others. If you have an image where the background is further away from the foreground, it'll be easier, but I wanted to show you guys because it will be a little bit of a challenge, meaning that I think there's going to be more value for you to see exactly how I do it. So first thing, is first here this image looks pretty good already but it's kind of just lacking a little bit of pop and a little bit of depth rather than sliding the contrast slider which you can see kind of ruins the photo in my opinion um, I'm gonna show you a little bit more localized way to do it I want to make this foreground really pop and really have a lot more contrast and I want to make this background have a little bit less now I'm gonna do that by using the local adjustments here in Lightroom or the masking as they call it you can click on masking and then the first thing that you want to do, if you have a foreground like this one, where the whole foreground is like equal distance away, we can just use a linear gradient to add some contrast. Now, the way a linear gradient works, once you select it, you click and drag. Anything that's white will be totally receiving uh, whatever adjustments you make here. Anything that's black will be receiving none of it. Anything in between will be receiving part of it. So you want to make sure that you feather this out uh, quite a ways just so that it appears a little bit more realistic. Then I want to drag this down. If you want the overlay to go away so you can actually see the image, go ahead and check show overlay. Then you can see the image now. I'm going to guess about like that, but once I start making my adjustment, I'm going to make some changes. Now I want to probably decrease the exposure, increase the highlights, maybe drop the shadows, maybe just use the contrast slider. We'll kind of play around with it here. And I might want to use the tone curve here. Just create a little bit of an S to kind of give some structure and some pop to that foreground. Actually, I want to bring the exposure back up. Maybe just drop the shadows somewhere about in there is probably looking pretty good. You can toggle that. You can see we've just added a touch of contrast. I'm going to do a little bit more in just a second here. You can also drag this out if you want it to apply further into the image, or you can reduce the feather and bring it up. 
if you want to do that as well. Now, I don't want this to be super obvious that I'm doing it. I don't want my viewer to be able to tell that I added contrast in the foreground because I want it to look totally natural. So it's really important that you use enough feather so that they can't quite tell exactly what you've done. You can continue to go in here and kind of fine tune and tweak the adjustments, but we'll probably come back to it in just a second. I do want to add another mask because I want to do the opposite to the background here. I think the way that I'm going to do this, there's a lot of different ways you could, but I'm going to do a select sky and then I'm going to inverse because I want to select these rocks up here. You can see it's done a pretty good job. You can click on these three buttons and hit invert. So it just selects the foreground. I could have done select subject, but I don't think that it would have selected quite like this. Now I want to also hit subtract here. And the reason why I want to subtract is because I don't want to affect down here. I just want to affect the rocks. So what I want to do, I'm actually going to do a linear gradient. I'm just going to remove some of that. Let's go maybe up like that. It's looking pretty good. And I also just want to subtract with a brush. I don't want to adjust over in here. And I don't want to adjust a ton over here. So now I've got a pretty good selection of just that one area. I can uncheck show overlay now. I can reduce the contrast here quite a bit. I can increase the shadows. I'm actually gonna increase the highlights and the whites because I still want that white to be pretty punchy, if that makes sense. I don't even know if that's a word, but punchy. Um, maybe adjust that a little bit. We can toggle the before and the after, before and after. So we're just adding a little bit of depth here. We're bringing back uh, some of the darks back here in the very back. You can see that I've reduced the contrast and I've done a couple other things here. Uh, I've increased the shadows and the highlights and the whites as well. But you just wanna reduce the contrast slightly. Now I'm gonna go back through and I'm going to add probably one or two more masks. This time I'm gonna do a radial gradient. I'm just gonna select right in here and I'm just gonna bring up the exposure and drop the contrast just a touch. That's gonna to bring a little bit of attention to the background, to our subject here. And I don't wanna do a lot to the highlights because I don't wanna affect the sky. We'll toggle that, always toggle everything. Let's add one more mask here and we are going to do a, another linear gradient, but this one I want to be a little bit shorter, and a little bit less tapered off. And I just, I'm just dropping the exposure here and I'm increasing the contrast once again. And then we'll just drag this up until it's in a good spot for us. Maybe, oops, and we're gonna hit undo there. We're gonna drag this down somewhere about in there. So I think that's looking pretty good. Um, you can see how much contrast we've added to the foreground. Um, you could also go in and just do a simple S curve at the end. Usually I like to do that just to kind of make the image pop at the very end and that will apply globally. And you can bring up the darks if you're feeling like it's getting a little too dark. But so I'm thinking that is looking pretty good there. You can see I haven't touched this contrast slider. I've simply just done some local adjustments. We've got before and we've got after before and after. If you looked at this and you thought it was too overcooked now, you could, of course, go back in, make adjustments. It's a nice thing about using the masking in Lightroom. It's super, super easy. Um, but you can see just how much more depth we've added to this photo by kind of adding contrast in the foreground, removing it from the background. Helps to give this photo a lot of depth and dimension. Hey, I really hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I want to help you guys continue to get better at photography. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.